final entry in the first round of competition, getting ready to go. One of the great characters of the sport, Jeff Billington, who's carried the colors of Great Britain into many championships, including two Olympic Games. Member of the Nations Cup winning team here at Spruce Meadows a number of years ago. And he is ready to go aboard Uppercut, a horse that he has a lot of faith in, in this type of competition. Well, it's, it's, it's interesting, it's the uh, Uppercut, quite a different type than Kelvin that we've just seen of uh, Pete Reimacher's Jr. Much smaller model of a horse, but does not get excited, very even temperament. And this is really, I mean, if you can ride this like a training exercise, you see the little pull on the rein, Jeff asking him to slow down a little bit, and then allowing him to close the leg to attack the fence. Little bit of luck at obstacle number five, but that might have been just what the doctor ordered, as uppercut very careful over the final fence. Great Britain advances with Jeff Billy number two. Leading things off will be Kelly Koss of Canada, as she did in round number one. And there you see the great Jeff Billington will be in the anchor position of the ten that have advanced. And from a rider's standpoint, that fills you full of confidence. There's no question. You know your horse has the ability. He's been there. He's done that. A puissance wall, however, is a completely different animal from the technical aspect of the six bar. And it's up to Kelly to stay relaxed. Look at the big horse having so little room in there for him. <laughs> to Ireland we go for our next entry, David Quigley. Eight nations have sent teams to the Spruce Meadows Masters 35th anniversary edition. In addition, well, I've been intrigued by this horse in through the week. He's you got a very interesting jumping style, can get a little bit excitable as the course goes on. Very, very exuberant jumper. Looks like he gets a touch fussy in the mouth, but David sits very, very calm. Lovely job. Certainly pins those ears forward at takeoff, and that is a sign Wales. Pablo Berrios gets ready to take the challenge with GNC Tropagold. So we're going to see a different style of jumping. Very upright, his head and his neck. As you can see, even just cantering around. Stays uh, almost perpendicular to the ground with his, uh, with his front legs. They, they don't lift up very high. Jumps deer-like. Yeah, he, he does. does a little bit. And, uh, you know, a lot of back-end push. Not a lot of bascule or bend in the back, you can see there. Very little. Likes the feel of those rails, yeah. but they all stayed up. A horse with the right touch advancing to the next west coast of Canada. West Vancouver to be specific, and he is aboard the 14-year-old Dutch bred gelding Royal Viali. Now for Gary, in your mind, all you got to do is exactly the same as you did last time. Just get set up, get your rhythm, hop on in there, and let Royal Viali do his thing. Oh, problems at the first fence, and that was a tough way to start things off. Just a miscommunication, it looked like, between horse and rider. One's pitching and one's not catching on the signals. That one, hard to say what happened there. Almost just looked like he, uh, his back end stuck. Let's have a look here. Front legs come up. He never pushed off in. His back legs just never pushed off the ground. He's just retired from the competition, choosing not to advance with uppercut through to the next round of competition where we will top out at a meter 80. Jeff, of course, understanding that he has some duties in the Nations Cup and the CN International still to come at the Spruce Meadows Masters. And you can see just how high the fences are being set for round number three of the Atco Electric Six Bar. There's our chief builder, Anthony D'Ambrosio of the United States. And we're down to four fences now, John. Well, the West Grandstand is now full. I mean, this place is absolutely packed. 
Last of the British riders still in play here at Spruce Meadows. Making my pregame picks looking a little skinny. Guy Williams now carrying the hopes of Great Britain with Balinka. Always get a long way off the base of those jumps. Oh. You can only be lucky so long. It all started to relate to the early going of the of the course there, John. Especially that of his father, winner here under very different conditions. Yeah. It was a miserable night when Pete and Curtis jumped to victory. Boy, braille like through the first three and then uh, easy as you like over the last. The fanfare provided by the Heavy Cavalry and Cambrai Band who are participating at this year's Masters Tournament. Here's a look at Pete Rymacher's Jr. Well, more importantly, I beat you, Ian. I think that's From four different nations. <laughs> Who's the most nervous on that Kelly list, Ian? is also carrying the hometown crowd on her back here. Let's see how it goes. Gotta keep that leg. Keep the leg. Each round gets better and better. Well, and this is where he wanted to get to, wasn't it? He wanted to get down to these uh, last four jumps. And this horse has looked supreme so far. Oh! Not wanting any part of the last obstacle. I think that the distance is caught up after the first three. Well, I think he had it done, but like we've seen, Ian, the, that distance starts to get longer. The horses are dropping from a higher height, and you must press. You oh, must yes. press. And Pete didn't do that. I think he was just waiting for Kelvin to take him. Call that a close-up. Yeah, uh, we will have a tie. Not unprecedented. You ever heard so many people be so quiet? They are always amazed at the size of the fences as you move through the competition. You can see they're well above the heads of the course builders. Now all she's got to do is exactly what she did last time. Get him straight. Don't overdo it. Keep the leg. Beautiful ride in. Now keep the leg. Follow it. And it's it's up. Oh. It danced in the cups, but it did not stay up now. Oh. And the brakes go on. A refusal. Still four faults. Yes. But he's got to start at fence five if he wants to continue. He cannot jump an obstacle that has already been jumped on course. Yeah, I think he. Uh, I think he thought it was the horse was going to make up enough room there, and he took a little bit back on the bridle instead of squeezing with dream the here. David Quigley aboard Valletto from Ireland. We go a meter fifty-three, meter sixty-eight, meter eighty, and two meters at the final fence. Here we go. Again, keep the leg on. You got it right now. It's off. Oh. He too has four faults, and I believe we have a draw at the top of the standings, John. David Quigley of Ireland not able to clear two meters aboard Valletto. Well, different for David here. He got very, very high over fence number five. Really had to press. He knew that. I just couldn't quite keep that front end up off the rail. 